and that confidence that you talked about, um, how, how important is it from a buy-in perspective to really, you know, have that confidence when you are working with your athletes and, and I guess to be able to sell the program to them, if, the, if that's a strength of yours, how often would you draw on that for, it's, for athletes? It started, as a, it started as a weakness though, because I had <laughs> misplaced confidence. I thought I was ready to be a high performance manager. I thought I could step into a VFL team, an AFL team and show them how it's done. And what I hadn't factored in was the interpersonal factors and the, you know, you can't, al- can't always let perfect be the enemy of good. Sometimes you might have a perfect plan and you've read it in textbook or you've seen it done or heard it on a podcast. Mm. And then, you know, COVID happens and you're playing in Queensland and you're a Melbourne based team and, you know, things have gone sideways and you can't really apply that same perfect plan. So you've got to make it up on the go. So I would not have had those skills um, at the time. So I think, uh, it's confidence, but within your own skill. So now I feel a lot more confident in those sort of things, the ability to be flexible and dynamic and, and think on my feet. Um, and then I think uh, being a bit more honest with your athletes. Like if you don't know a thing, just like, I'm not sure. You know, we're, we're working this out together. I think that's okay at, from a coaching point of view and from an intern, you know, young coach point of view, if you're, if you're just starting out. In terms of the practical elements you talked about, some of those tips and tricks that, you, you know, an experienced coach has from, from years of working in the trenches, so to speak. Um, though, did you feel like that fast tracked your ability to be able to develop athletes, like those little things on how to spot with confidence when they're lifting heavy, and those cues with stretching and mobility and activation and warm ups and all the different chapters that would have been in the internship? Uh, how, if you put years on it, how how much do you reckon you you gain from that? From a I guess competitive oh. point of view for SNCs listening. Yeah, I think I think a good internship with plenty of practical time where you're actually getting to work with the athletes and make mistakes. So you get a chance to do the coaching, stuff it up, and then have your mentor go, Hey Jacob, we like this we found this works better. Try it if you do this. Or you were too mm-hmm. heavy handed with that athlete, you need to be a little softer because they're a little nervous in the situation. I think the combination of good, you know, education stuff, but also the uh, on on floor practical stuff. I think in that six to 12 months, that first six to 12 months, I reckon I got 10 years of experience because Durham was so good at, at sharing that stuff and giving me the right amount of space to make those mistakes, but do it safely. I think um, a, a decade of experience was, was added on there for sure, um, which, which I hope has helped me not make 10 years worth of mistakes. I'm sure these athletes come to core advantage. What does what sort of a week look like for them? Yeah, so... We tend to focus mostly on the strength, strength and power stuff. We tend not yep. to get too much into the running work because um, you can get footy coaches a little bit angry if you sort of step on their territory, particularly if they've got a plan coming up. So we'll mm-hmm. see what their plan is, what it looks like, but mostly we'll focus on the strength and power work. And so for most athletes, most junior athletes, they're often undercooked in that space. So it's just, let's just get in the gym twice a week. Progressive overload, kind of a linear plan, nothing too sexy or exciting. Let's just nail the fundamentals for that first six months, get you from useless, completely weak, and you know, never step foot in a gym to adequate at most lifts. And let's shift over to, to metric. Um, how did you come to, to create it? I know your brother's involved, so talk us through for those that aren't aware of the app. Um, yeah, how did it come about and what does it do? How does it help athletes? Yeah, so my brother is a computer scientist uh, and he came back from Sweden and we would lift together after a shift here at Core Advantage. So I'd finish coaching, he'd come across, we'd do our lift and we'd, we'd lift. And I'd always been interested in the idea of velocity-based training, which is the idea of using some sort of technology to track the speed of your lift. So you'd, you, know, you lift uh, 80 kilos for five reps, but you also do that for a given velocity. And that velocity can tell you about your fatigue, your readiness and stuff like that when you compare that velocity to old data, say when you lifted 80 kilos last week. And so I'd always liked that idea and I showed Davey it and we started programming at each other with it and I'd sort of gave him a few constraints using velocity-based training science. And he's like, why do we have to use these things with string all the time? What's going on here? What's with the strings? Well, that's just the best it is. He's like, I reckon I can do better. I reckon I can do this with like your smartphone, with a camera. I was like, mm, this has been around for a while. Surely someone's thought of it. He's like, no, 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 not, they haven't thought of it like me. And so we just started, he was already working with us. He was building the, the testing apps and the sort of the gym management systems that we were using. For athletes to listen to this and say, this is exactly what I'm looking for. And I want to start practicing this with my training in the gym. What would be the process to get started? Yeah. So uh, depending on when you're listening to this, head to metric.coach. 
That's the website for the app. It's called Metric VBT, uh, and that'll tell you the status of where the app is right now, whether you can download it or you have to join the beta program. Um, the first version will be a free app that anyone can download and use. It'll be free, always will be, and that'll just be a basic single set analysis. So you set the camera up, you record, and you get one set's worth of data. 